What's up guys, welcome back to another Bav Life video. Today we're going to be talking about these E46s and their transmissions. SMG or manual, which one is better, which one do we like, and which one should you buy? Yeah, we're going to be comparing them, uh, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of each transmission, so stay tuned. <laughs> We have no option but to start with the Notorious SMG with my experienced SMG driver. Talk yes, to me, sir, Felix. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So uh, we got a SMG transmission of my 2003 46M3. Uh, these transmissions were used in the 1997 to 1999 E36M3. Um, they made 500 of them, and I don't think they sold well at all. I believe that there were a lot of people that had a lot of gripes about them, the way that they shift and uh, the way they drove. So they implemented that transmission in the E46 M3 along with the six-speed manual. And they also had this transmission in the E60 M5. So the E60 M5, I believe, I, I drove an E60 M5 personally. I can tell you that it is a step up from driving this. Uh, it's a little different. Uh, I think personally it has to do with also the V10 up front, a lot more torque, a lot more power. I, I believe that it was a lot smoother. They got the drive logic stuff um, all sorted out with the intensities and how it drives, how it shifts, what gears it selects, uh, how the automatic mode is. But back to this E46 M3, this transmission is not that bad, I can tell you personally. It does shift kind of jerky sometimes here and there when you're driving through traffic. But it does give you the same control a manual transmission would give you. You just don't have the third pedal. What does SMG stand for in the first place? Uh, se sequential manual gearbox, I believe. So it's basically a manual transmission, but literally without the third pedal. So I would say the main differences between the, the two, uh, they're literally the same transmissions. The six speed is just standard six speed with a clutch and a shifter. This has the shifter and also an actuator up here and an SMG pump. So the pump that pumps the fluid that allows the, the transmission to shift the gears when you, you know, press the paddle or mm -hmm. hit the gear lever to yeah. shift. So these are these are the, the maintenance expensive repairs that cost a lot and that's why everybody's scared from the SMG or no? Yeah, we'll get more into that, but that's usually why um, people don't, uh, well, one of the reasons why people don't like SMG is because that is because the, the pump can be kind of expensive to replace. It, is, it sits right next to the starter, um, right under the intake manifold. A lot of people, you know, don't have let's just say the mechanical knowledge to even replace one let alone even get to it so it could be it could be you know pretty costly um you can get used pumps for pretty cheap you can get uh pumps that people rebuild for pretty cheap a lot of people don't trust rebuild and use stuff because you know more than likely if they put it in they think that it'll fail but uh I can tell you personally with the market right now being filled with people that are swapping their vehicles from SMG to six speed, you're going to find a lot of yep. parts that aren't, yeah, you know, damaged or aren't broken or aren't completely used out. So you can definitely do that. And they also have relocation kits for the SMG. So if you guys do want to keep your SMG, maybe the next time you have to replace your pump, you should go get a relocation kit. It'll re relocate the SMG pump at the top of the engine so you guys can replace it easier when it does go out because that's usually the main part that does go out. Um, I haven't heard people getting problems with the actuators and stuff like that. I think one other problem is that there's a salmon relay that usually burns out or goes bad and it'll, you know, stop you from even being able to start the car sometimes. Uh, that could be, you know, a problem. All right, so we're just going to, I'm going to step on this clutch pedal, start this car real quick. Where's that clutch pedal at though? <laughs> I don't see anything there. Sorry, it, 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 it's, uh, it's invisible, but, uh. So to start these SMGs up, usually uh, what I do is I put it in the second position, hold my foot on the brake just so the car can go into neutral, and then turn the key, start the car. While the lever is in this position? While in the lever is in the, end, uh, the zero position or the end position for the later, I believe, vehicles. Mm -hmm. So in order to get moving, to get going, let's put on seatbelts first. Safety first, safety first, guys. All right. So what I'll usually do is, obviously to start the vehicle, I put the handbrake down first. Then I put the lever over. And I always make sure I'm in automatic mode. Uh, it's just easier for me. You get in the vehicle, you can just kind of go. And then 
it'll roll back like a manual transmission. When you give it gas, you can kind of feel the, the clutch engaging, and then finally you're able to take off. All right, setting off in the uh, E46. So that was the first gear shift right there. Second. Now, uh, I just wanted to spell some, I guess, myths about the SMG where uh, it's unreliable and it's, you know, it's horrible to drive and it shifts like garbage or something like that. Honestly speaking, I was one of the people that used to believe those myths. I used to believe stuff like that, but um, after getting this car and actually driving this transmission for the last maybe three months or so, daily driving it, I can honestly say that I wouldn't say they're not all true, but a lot of the stuff that people are saying aren't. Um, for one, this transmission can be a bit jerky. When I first got the car, um, it was a bit jerky. It was kind of, you know, jerky jerky in traffic. It didn't know what gear you wanted to be in. It didn't know basically when you wanted to shift, stuff like that. But then um, I did a little research and I found out that you can reset the throttle position sensor and that basically has memory from the last driver the last owner the last person that owned this vehicle did drive it very slow drove very gently they didn't you know older guy so you know when you wanted to go it wasn't there uh it didn't shift fast even when you needed it to shift fast so it was just uh it wasn't that great of an experience at first after i reset it uh when i reset it basically after about i'd say a couple days of driving or a couple miles of driving it kind of got used to the way I drove, the style I like to drive. When I drove slow, it shifted slow, but when I drove fast or spirited, you know, shifted fast, it, it chose the right gear and everything. Um, another thing, I guess, with reliability issues, people like to say, oh, you know, it's just the pump goes out, this goes out, you know, parts in the transmission go out. And honestly speaking, yes, you're gonna have, I mean, there, there's just more moving parts. You're gonna have the pump, you're gonna have the actuator, you got uh, lines, hi, uh, uh, you know, the, the hydraulic fluid that you put inside the pump that helps shift the car. You're gonna have those, um, I guess, gripes or gremlins with the vehicle, but honestly speaking, that's just what you get when you get one of these transmissions. If you really don't want those problems, then you would get a six speed. Um, they don't go bad as often as people say. I don't know why people say they go out go bad so often. Uh, believe it or not, this pump right here was replaced at BMW. I got receipts for it and everything. Uh, the pump was replaced at BMW along with the clutch and everything. And it hasn't given any problems or anything like that. And this was replaced about, I would say, 100,000 miles ago. And it still shifts perfectly fine. Um, it doesn't jerk me around. It doesn't throw me around the vehicle. And it doesn't give me any, you know, any problems or anything like that. It's very smooth and I actually like driving it. So, we got um, the different shift intensities. So, I'm going to drop it down to one. In the first shift intensity, uh, I like to shift really early. Wow, we're in fifth? Yeah, I like to shift hell? really early and... Also, I believe it starts off in second from a stop. Uh, I don't really like this intensity just because it rides the clutch a bit when you start off, um, you know, let's say from a, from a dead stop. Um, the second shift intensity, it's kind of just as soft as the first one. It does like to shift early too, which I'm not really a fan of, especially when you want to go. And uh, that actually starts off in the first, uh, in first gear when you come from a dead stop. And the third shift intensity gives you the right balance. It gives you the right speed. And that for me, I at least feel like for daily driving, it gives you the right balance, gives you the right speed. Um, times the shifts well. When you want it to downshift, when you put your foot down, it'll downshift, you know, at a decent rate. I wouldn't say at the fastest rate that it can, but it does it at a decent speed. But also, we got the fourth shift intensity. So this is a little harsher than the third, honestly speaking. If you want me to be brutally honest, it's a little harsher than the third. I don't know if you can really feel it that much unless you're really getting on the car, but it is a little uh, more intense than the third and it's a little faster. Now, usually what I like to do with the fifth intensity is I like to turn the, the intensity up to the fifth setting, hit the sport button, 
and uh, I'll show you right now when we take off from this light. Uh, oh, it shifts yeah. a lot more aggressively. And on top of that, uh, you know, it re it responds a lot faster, so. <laughs> so you can hear that clunk. That clunk is uh, the SMG basically shifting to the next gear as aggressively as it can. So that's one of the main reasons why I don't really use the fifth intensity too much, but for the most part, it shifts fast enough. Uh, honestly speaking, it shifts faster than you probably can with a, with a manual transmission. So I can see why there's a like, you know, there's a, a want for this transmission. Uh, believe it or not, I honestly don't really have a problem with driving this transmission every single day. driving in town and you can just see how smoothly it shifts in the third setting. There's no kick, no nothing. Um, there's also another thing I wanted to mention. There's a lot of people that I've been on the forums, I've been online, a lot of people with SMGs, they say that you have to lift while shifting. And uh, I just wanna say, I haven't had to really lift while I was shifting. Um, even if I'm not full throttle, I really don't lift while I'm shifting. It doesn't add an extra kick to the car. It doesn't make it that much smoother. Now, when I reset that throttle position sensor, after I did that, I, I didn't really have to lift after, like when I would shift and stuff, it kind of just adapted. So I guess the drive logic system in this car is not really you know, that bad. It adapts pretty well. Yeah, so, does it change my thoughts on basically what I would prefer? No, I believe I would still prefer the six-speed over the SMG. Definitely something that, uh, it, that's a personal preference. And I also feel like there's a lot less moving pieces to break, if you understand what I'm trying to say. So, um, you know, the SMG has the pump, has the actuator, got all this electronic stuff connected to it with hydraulic lines and, um, I just feel like, you know, especially for something like a vehicle like an E46 M3 that's mainly track focused, that's what you don't want. You don't want more electronics and more pieces that can break while driving and stuff like that. Uh, also, I've also heard of problems when people track these SMGs where they have their fluid, the hydraulic fluid, um, overheating while you're tracking the vehicle. It's just another thing that, you know, you don't really want while you you know while you're driving the vehicle so but for everyday driving i can kind of understand why people do like the smg it is actually a lot more uh user friendly than uh the six speed so i guess if you don't know how to drive stick this is definitely an option i would definitely consider driving one first before you say that i don't want it because it can honestly be the difference between you actually liking it or you just keep saying you know you don't like it or whatever the case may be. And it's definitely not anything like an automatic transmission. No, so that's that's another thing. Don't think that you're gonna walk into this car thinking that it's like as smooth as like an automatic transmission or something like that. Like the ZFs that BMW makes now or um, you know, a DCT or something like that. It's not as smooth as that. It will be a little jerky. Um, when you shift, it does shift real hard when you need it to, um, so you'll be feeling everything that this transmission is doing. You'll be hearing everything the transmission is doing. So it's not, if it's, that's not, you know, something that you will like, it's something that you should consider, um, you know, 
if you do consider getting this vehicle. All right, so now we're on to the SMG's counterpart, the manual transmission. Yes, sir. With a clutch pedal. You excited, Phil, to take it for a spin? 100%, bro, 100%. So I'm SMG a, is trash? I'm a six-speed guy. SMG is not trash, though, guys. All right, talk to me. All right, so. How do you start it up? <laughs> <laughs> Show me how you start it up, man. Uh, brake, uh, make sure it's a neutral. Uh, no? Oh, oh, my fault. I forgot this is not SMG. <laughs> you actually got to step on this pedal right here, this third pedal right here. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Well, don't give me that. Fires right up. Fires don't right up. Don't give me that. That's some oh, just as fun. Copyright. So, we got uh, this 2004 BMW M3 with a 6 speed manual. Uh, Get Trag 420. This specific transmission, I believe it's inside the E39 M5. Inside the BMW 540 uh, E39. Inside this E46 M3. Lovely. So these transmissions, I know a lot of people say these transmissions are notorious for, um, you know, dropping gears. You lose like two or three gears. Usually, I think it was third and fourth. You lose both those gears a lot of the time uh, from hard shifting and clutch dumps and all types of stuff. Aggressive driving, which the car was made for. Uh, but I can honestly say that if you don't beat on the car so ridiculously or if you don't shift aggressively and you actually know how to drive stick you won't really have a problem with these transmissions um there is uh also when you service the fluid inside these transmissions i know they like royal purple synchro max they you know i heard that basically makes the transmission feel like new i know manual transmissions especially bmws um in the cold they really 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 don't like to shift when the transmission fluid is cold and the transmission itself is cold, it barely wants to go into first, let alone shift from first to second. Most people I know go from first in the mornings and they'll just go right to third. But just a little, you know, gripes about the transmission. But I guess the, you know, positive about it is it's just a transmission with a shift lever and a clutch pedal and a clutch with the flywheel. It's, uh, you know, it's that simple. More than likely, if you're not gonna have issues shifting, um, or like issues getting into gear with the actual transmission. The only other thing that you're ever gonna have to really service is the fluid and the clutch. Uh, pretty simple things to do if you have mechanical knowledge and you know, you're a hands-on person. So right off the bat, obviously there's a lot more engagement with driving a six speed. You got the third pedal. Uh, you got the shifter that you're actually moving into gear. So, Obviously, it's going to give you a lot more of an engaging driving experience, whereas in the SMG, you're not going to, you know, you have basically a computer kind of shifting for you or, you know, something else giving you shift input. He always has to move my steering wheel higher. Yeah, always. You know, tall people out here, tall people problems. What can I say? I'm 6'4". the bat here taking off on the road I also noticed that um, like I said he services transmission with Royal Purple Synchro Max and the transmission is really really smooth it's not hard to get into gear um, I've driven this car before this video and this car has never had a problem even in the cold going into gear uh, shifting into a gear it's, it's smooth you don't have any crunching you don't have any you know, rough shifting, hard shifting, grinding of gears, none of that stuff. Uh, it's just simple. Step on the clutch for his gear, let up the clutch a bit, gas, and, you know, you're on your way with it. You're not going to have any more than likely transmission problems, or transmission related issues, or more electronics that'll prevent your car from starting, or prevent your car from running, or prevent it from, you know, being driven on a track or something like that. It's just less. Uh, to think about when you're driving the car. I think that's what most people like is the simplicity of this transmission. Whoa! Oh! Ah! That's, that's, that's literally what it's all about. This right here is what it's all about. Oh yeah. But why, why can't you smile like that when you have SMG? I think you gotta be more serious when you're behind the uh, 
the wheel of SMG. It's more business class. Uh -huh. This is more like racer boy stuff. Oh. And that's for all you people out there. It's a little lesson to learn. Most people that are gonna drive SMG, not gonna be doing a lot of, you know, floor in the car and all that stuff, beating on the car, but this right here, definitely gonna be doing a lot of that. It's easier to get carried away, huh? Oh, oh there's, yeah. there's, there's That's a, another thing too, man, uh, rev matching. Uh, I believe sooner or later, I'm going to get a CSL tune on the SMG. That's gonna be in a later video. And I'm gonna talk about the differences between stock uh, SMG and CSL SMG flash. Uh, I'm trying. I'm gonna try to get it with rev matching and all that, uh, the quicker shifts and everything. So, just so I can see the big difference. Um, and honestly, if it's worth the money, anyways, or if it's worth you guys getting it, anyways, for all you SMG owners. So, in regards to practicality, the SMG is probably more practical everyday driving. Um, especially in traffic, you know, uh, we're here in New York, we got a bunch of traffic, especially rush hour. You know, it gets really annoying sometimes, first, second, first, second, stop signs, this and that. Um, the SMG, just throw it in drive, automatic, and uh, you're, you're it's doing its thing. Fun factor, I think the manual's taking it. Phil, do you agree? Yeah, the manual got that. I think, I believe, um, manual's more fun. I think it gives you more free reign to do whatever you want, the SMG's a little more restrictive. Next, reliability and maintenance. Um, it's looking like the SMG is a little more unreliable, needs a little more maintenance. There's just a lot more going on, as Felix said. Pump, actuator. Yeah, bro, um, you said it, honestly speaking, I think that the, like I said, the, like you said, the SMG is just, there's a lot more going on with the SMG. There's a lot more to keep up on. All right, so now on to practicality, daily driving. Uh, for practicality and daily driving, you might want the SMG. More than likely, it's just it's just easier. You, you know, you put people in the car. You don't gotta worry about uh, shifting and stuff. When you got maybe drinks in the cup holder and people in the mm -hmm. vehicle and yeah. talking and driving, and it's just a lot easier to live with on a day-to-day -day basis. Honestly speaking, this is all up to you. We made this comparison video strictly because we want to help people out that want to get an E46 M3 but are really confused with which one to get. Whether it be a 6 manual or the SMG, what fits your lifestyle, what fits your driving style, and what you really want to do with the car. So, all in all, if you're looking to get an E46 M3 and deciding between transmissions, I hope this helped. SMG, good transmission. Manual, good transmission. Yep. Uh, manual, probably a little less practical, but a little more enjoyable from our perspective. SMG, feel, talk to me. But so, a, li a little less reliable. And it's more maintenance heavy. Uh, if you're not really looking for something that you know, you're not trying to spend too much money on, it's probably better you go with that, the six speed. But if you can find one that's serviced properly, that was done, all the maintenance was done on it, I'd say go for the SMG if that's, you know, the route that you want to go. But it's not a regular automatic transmission, so don't Just expect it to yeah. shift like, like normal. It's a little, a little jerky from what you guys saw in the little, video. But yeah, for the most part, it's not a bad choice. So definitely don't down look the, uh, you know, the SMG, kind of kick it off your, your list. Try it before you say you don't like it. All right, guys, that'll be it for us today. Bye, life out.